All right, hello everyone. Welcome to uh, the London session. I started up this recording just in case um, this trade works out. I was shorting the NASDAQ, oh, and then yes. as I saw That's certain things, back. I figured uh, I would give a longer shot. Um, I will tell you what I um, was seeing. Um, so, number one, between... 0300 and 0400 is a very good time. The London hour, London open hour for price to make its high or the low of the day. Okay. Um, in terms of like what could end up drawing Friday's trading higher, premium SIBI here, that unfilled portion of that premium SIBI. So we see that we have a premium SIBI up between this low of 268 spot 25 and this high of. 260 spot 50 so that's a premium SIBI that price could be attracted to um, in terms of liquidity draws we've got a nice flat equal highs here up around 305 quarters so there's going to be a pool of liquidity up there institutional liquidity um, and then obviously we've just got our nearest liquidity up above 238.75 this is the right time of the day for price to make a low on the 24-hour banking cycle um, and I'm really, guys, I'm just going to tell you, uh, I already have a line drawn on it. That buy side liquidity there at 307 evens, it's really looking very flat right there and very juicy. Now that premium SIBI up there, 264 is looking pretty juicy as well. So I have reason to believe that this long uh, might actually be at the actual low of the day. So number one, it's the right hour for price. If it is going to have a bullish day on Friday, it's the right hour for price to, to actually make the low. Okay, London London open hour. Number two, uh, ICT bullish breaker. I'm going to show you. All right, do you see it's low, high, and a lower low that pushes into that liquidity? Notice that we were already in some, uh, you know, higher time frame liquidity. This is also a bullish order block, by the way. Um, so look, low, high. That's bullish breaker. Okay. So that's bullish breaker right there. Okay. As I said, it's bullish breaker. To, what? Ano? Pass. Tam, what ano? Smatri, smatri. Bullish breaker. Guys, look. Bullish breaker. So, all right. So I have reason to believe that we just made the low potentially for the whole 24 hour banking cycle. And then from this point, you know, price is going higher. Um, but guys, um, I'm going to reach the profit target if we go much higher. So I'm going to be done for trading here in the London session. If, you know, we continue to draw higher. So, um, all right, guys, risk management. I need to go ahead and just put the break even stop in. Okay. I just want to have good habits here. Um, guys, my profit limit here today on top step, step two, is 157, 197. I've been recording every session, I've shown you all the ideas. Yeah, we're currently trading in that bullish breaker. And I think price is at least coming up back to New York Open 12 a.m. So remember our power of three and um, accumulation, manipulation, distribution. So this is basically like one big manipulation. And then they'll start distributing higher, I think. I think Friday's looking up probably. Here we go. I think I think Friday's New York session is probably looking up at this point, right? So we get that push far lower on the London session. We make our low of the day, and uh, a big bullish bullish day here on non-farm payrolls on Friday. That's what I'm thinking, and I'm thinking that target first target guys like reasonable, kind of reasonable target. 267. Okay. 
then liquidity target above 307 even so I think we're looking at a very green day on um, for Friday Friday non-farm payrolls that's what I'm currently thinking looking at all of our overnight action look knowing my power of three model So, wanted to get this recording in, see if we do hit the profit limit. It should be a breakaway gap. Should not trade back down to my sell stop. Should want to start at least 204. Need to do some quick math. Okay, um, that should be it, I want to say, I think. Should pretty easily draw up to that sell limit. That's it, guys. That's been bread and butter trades today, guys. Like, really? Not hitting really any home runs, just like bread and butter. Get thirty six hundred dollars, like easy models, nothing, nothing crazy, guys. This, this right here is a combination between what time of the day it is and then bullish breaker. That's what it is, guys. Time of the day and then bullish breaker, and then power of three accumulation, manipulation, distribution. Um, I don't believe it should come back to stop me out. So I'm going to leave the con contracts on. I believe that, um, yeah, so, so it should turn around and go higher right about where it is right now. should not come all the way back down to my sell limit. Sorry, my sell stop. That should be a breakaway gap there. That should not get filled back in. Unless I'm missing something. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm leaving those contracts on. I'm not moving them. Actually, going to move the sell stop below that low. That should be protected. I think. Okay, could actually come in and hit my stop loss, then go higher. So I'm going to put it below the low. Yeah, I'm not. I was not going to pull those contracts there. This thing should still go higher. My opinion. The 
very good sign if it can leave that gap open there. So if it can leave the yellow yellow box nine. Leave that yellow box open, we're looking good. Looking very good if we leave the yellow box open. That'd be a breakaway gap. So really would like to see it not come in and trade back into that yellow box. I know that. That would be a breakaway gap there. And then come in and invert this civvy. So uh, basically I come in like this and that. Let me show you again. Trade into the civvy, trade down a couple ticks like that. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. I want to see the yellow box remain open. The yellow box to remain open. That's what I'd like to see. I guess they're not just going to rip it higher immediately. So we wait. Profit limit is coming up soon if we can get there. I'm going to have to put up this recording later. Internet's not going to be so good right now. All right, Lord willing, we will exercise patience here. I don't want to see it trade back to the yellow box. Would like to see the yellow box remain open. All things considered, I think this should go higher. I want to see that yellow box remain open. Okay, want to see that yellow box remain open, but it's not looking like uh, it will. 
So I'm not exactly sure what I missed in the analysis here, but I'm going to leave it. I'm going to um, let that stop loss get hit, and we'll trade from there. Trading back in, unfortunately, the yellow box. I suppose I missed something in the analysis. All right, we're trading in the yellow box. Would like to see, I mean, Ideally, I'd like to see it act as support. I don't want to see price close in the yellow box, really. Ah, that's not good. Going to let the stop work, though. Going to let the stop work. Idea here is not invalid unless the stop is hit. That was a good close. Ah. Well, I'm watching. I'm watching that yellow box pretty intently. I want to see that gap uh, remain at least partially open. see any candles really close in it. I want to see it kind of act like lava to the candles, candle closes. No. Yeah, re-delivered. Huh? Only a small part of it is open now. the stop loss play out though. That's a good candle. That was a good good reaction there. I'm not gonna close this out. I'm going to exercise the patience that I know that I have. analysis suggests that that is a bullish breaker did leave part of that yellow box open which is good now we're getting a little bit of displacement away from that yellow box that's good that's very good gonna have a lot of traders a lot of positions trapped now which is good
Looking good. Looking better. Like to see continued displacement to the upside. So that Sibby could invert. Trade back into that Sibby. See that Sibby right there? Get a few ticks lower. Could it invert. Okay, look at that. All right, let's see if that inverted fair value gap would, would come into effect like right here. So should see like tick back down, flash black, and then flash big green. Okay, invert, it, invert that Sibby on the way up. The draw should be higher now. Should invert that Sibby. I'm just calling this out loud. I'm not drawing the box on it. Um, we should invert that civvy, and there it is. Okay, good reaction. Inverted fair value gap there. I'm just calling it out. I'm not drawing it. Inverted fair value gap. I'd like to see that civvy act as support and invert and uh, trade higher. And now we're looking at pretty definitive targets to the upside. Nearest high, liquidity pool. Now I think we're going to start spooling to that. Coming back into that same inverted fair value gap, would like to see it invert again and, and then spool higher, go attack our buy side liquidity here. We're in that bullish breaker, we're right at the middle part of middle point. I would like to see price really aggressively spool higher here. Go attack that buy side. So I really want to see it like first target here is that high right there at 204 spot 75. We should make it up there, no problem. Sibby inverted right there. See if we can get that inverted fair value gap if it comes back down. I want to see clean movement to the upside now. Pretty soon. Low should be in for the 24 hour banking cycle. We're probably looking at a healthy, healthy bullish candle for Friday's trading. Probably going to look um, a very healthy bullish candle. The low for the 24 hour banking cycle is probably in. That push lower on the London session was a manipulation for the 24 hour cycle. So. Okay, so.
All right. That's what we're looking at. That should be an inverted Sibby right there. Comes straight trades back in between those two blue lines it should find support on that spool higher or spool higher before that but I took some risk off um, trying to, to exercise discipline not get too greedy so yeah it took two off leaving one on to run to our profit limit for the day Inverted Sibby there. We're in a bullish breaker. Price should at least want to make it up to that high of 204 spot 75 and then one standard deviation higher. That's what we're looking at right now. But using some of our other models, guys, we know that price should should really uh, pretty you know rapidly and aggressively get back up to our New York open midnight price that's 233 and a quarter uh, and it's gonna need to do that pretty quickly you know all things considered because the New York repricing macro uh, is gonna need to be in effect in a few hours to take us much higher if that's what prices objective is on the day so all things being considered we're gonna probably accelerate above that New York open midnight price pretty pretty quickly we're probably gonna start to see rapid you know acceleration I think it needs to get above that 233 spot 25 in order to um, begin we're probably looking at like a big up day on Friday like big probably looking at coming up closing that regular trading hours gap or getting to the midway point of it but all the way up there that low would be 15,150 and a quarter so all things being considered it's got a long ways to go in order to fill in that regular trading hours gap filling it in halfway still have a long way to go so it's got a lot of work to do so it needs to start it needs to start moving pretty quickly you know with a purpose so we should start to see that movement up to 233 and a quarter New York open midnight here pretty quick it's gonna need to accelerate to do that Yeah, we're probably looking like a huge pump on non-farm payrolls. Probably. I'm not saying it will, but that's kind of my current thinking. Non-farm payrolls, big pump. Yeah, it's got that New York open 12 a.m. in the crosshairs. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the London session. It is Okay. All times even when we're getting close to our profit limit, we need to um, stay objective. I would not want to see price get below that inverted SIBI inverted IFVG 
Um, I like to delineate them between Bissies and Sibby, so I'm just calling that an inverted Sibby right there. Um, Price should really want to start aggressively spooling up to that New York Open midnight. So that 233 and a quarter, that price. That's the power of three model, guys. So we can see accumulation, manipulation, and then it's going to start distributing. It should, yeah. Power of three model, guys. Power of three model. Tired. All things considered, price should start to accelerate to our sell limit there. It's virtually impossible that it's going to come and stop me out, I think. That's what we're looking at, guys. Looking at um, another top step profit limit here for step two. I mean, Lord willing, on Monday we get funded. Gonna be, I'm gonna be very cautious on Sundays trading. Really taking it light. Don't want to fuck that up at all. We're using a bullish breaker model, ICT bullish breaker. We're using power of three model. Okay, I'll show you power of three. Um, power of three model, cumu accumulation, manipulation, distribution, guys. That's going to be accumulation. And then our move down is going to be manipulation. And third stage is going to be distribution. Okay, accumulation, manipulation, and distribution, guys. That's power of three. In addition to that, ladies and gentlemen, we're using a bullish breaker. So bullish breaker um, is going to be low, high, low, pushes into liquidity. So I'll just draw those three points for you guys. Low, high, low that pushes into liquidity. So that's uh, bullish. That's going to be ICT bullish breaker model. We see our ICT um, breaker block standard deviation projections. Okay, we see that our first standard deviation would take us back up into this area here. Now, that seems like not a very important level to me, right? Just kind of the middle of the road. But on the other hand, that second standard deviation that would take us above these equal highs, that confirms us going above that New York Open Midnight price. And then third standard deviation, you see would it take us above this. So everything for me, all the models are kind of speaking like Friday's going to be a big pump.
That's what I'm currently thinking, guys. So, we use a bullish breaker model. We use a power of three accumulation manipulation distribution. Um, we used market maker buy model. Well, not really. Um, but we know that London London session is likely on a very bullish day. London session is likely going to make our low for the 24 hour banking cycle. He goes through that in the market maker series. So I knew that going in. So combining that with this bullish breaker, that's how I made that entry happen. Okay. I saw that we had a low and we had a high. I saw that we were, you know, we were trading into sell side liquidity. And so that's why you see that order and you're like, well, how did he do that? Well, I saw that we were already trading into liquidity, so we'd already price had already reached a higher time frame liquidity target. That was a 30 minute liquidity target. And then I saw the two legs of a bullish breaker. I saw point A, I saw point B. And so what I did is I went over to this order block that we had on the left here. I put my order in there for one contract and lo and behold that's probably the low of the 24 hour day so guys it's all about you know really mastering your ICT models what time of the day is it this is like market maker stuff right or market maker buy model stuff if it's gonna be a very bullish day we're probably making the low in London I saw that it was London I saw that it was probably looking like a bullish breaker I saw that we were trading into sell side liquidity. You know, I see, by the way, there's a number of other things that suggest we're probably going to have a big up day on Friday, right? Regular trading hours gap is sitting above. That could draw price upwards. That's that. And then in addition to that, take a look at this, guys. We got SIBI up here. That's a premium SIBI. Got a premium SIBI up here that hasn't been delivered. Got a liquidity pool up here. And it's all pointing in the same direction for Friday's trading. Okay, so it doesn't mean that I'm right, but I'm just telling you it's all pointing in the same direction. So, lots of models, guys. Lots of models. I, you know, and I've done a lot of work into this, guys. These entries don't happen without a lot of work. You notice that I referenced a lot of models: market maker buy model, sell side liquidity, bullish breaker, time of the day, London session, order block over here, mean threshold of that order block. A lot of models are being referenced at once, guys. Power of three, accumulation, ma manipulation, distribution. Power of three. So, a lot of models that are being, you know, that are running through my head, depending on what time of day it is. By the way, let's see if we had a London Silver Bullet. Guys. London Silver Bullet was right there. London Silver Bullet trade. So, it was there. So what I want to see price do is it comes down to this inverted SIBI and, and find that as support and then spool higher. I want to see it really start, you know, moving in that direction. It should really pretty, pretty confidently and pretty quickly reprice up to that New York Open midnight price. Guys, again, that's power of three. That's market maker buy model. That's these are these is knowing your daily profiles. That's why I have the New York Open Midnight Price, especially during the overnight session. That's why I have it there. Okay, I want to see it come down potentially to this inverted SIBI here. Three minute chart, invert that, go higher. I want to see it start, if all of my theories are correct here, I want to see it start spooling higher very quickly.
So, I'd really like to start to see it accelerate in the next hour. Confirm, confirm my crackpot theories. If you're on TradingView, by the way, just so you know, you click on the right side here, and that will give you that um, that will give you the economic calendar. You can see when we're probably going to have, you know, injections of volatility. We can see that next week, July 12th, we got some economic events. That's on Wednesday, so Sunday, Monday, Tuesdays. While well, Sunday and Monday's trading might be a bit quiet, no economic news until uh, July 12th, and. Europe doesn't have really any economic news for a long time. So, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, non farm payrolls tomorrow, guys. I'm kind of expecting a big green day tomorrow, looking at, looking at all of everything I'm looking at. By the way, guys bread and butter trade on that bullish breaker let me show you something just like complete no-brainer if you get in down here just aim literally for the breaker high very high probability trade like your nearest liquidity if you have a big breaker bread and butter right there now one standard deviation it should usually get up to one standard deviation as well like he teaches in the model that one standard deviation is is the bread and butter but you can also just aim literally for the breaker high it's just an option guys you can make a lot of money with a lot of repeated wins guys that's why these high probability trades are so vital to making income you don't have to hit home runs guys you really don't that one standard deviation right there even though I think it's going way higher than that that right there, that would be bread and butter. Really. You use this bullish breaker, you can even get long right here. Just take it off right there, it's 20 points. Guys. It's bread and butter, it's just bringing home the bacon. It's just, you know, cooking a steak. Right? One standard deviation plays. Right? I'll show you another one standard deviation play. Just made an order block here, that should be an order block. And let me show you what that standard deviation would look like. Okay. So you can see that we're sitting at 207. So one standard deviation would take us up eight points. Bread and butter right there. If that's an order block, should at least go up one standard deviation. Two standard deviation. That order block, by the way, is confirming one standard deviation of the breaker block. You see that? That's how we get confluence, guys. That's how we get confluence is we use multiple models if they're kind of all pointing at the same thing, that's probably where it's going. So this is using this order block here. I dare say that could even be a propulsion block right there. Although I'm not super familiar with it, but you can use your standard deviation projections off an order block like this, or an immediate rebalance like this black candle right here. As soon as price trades above the open of that candle, that should be an order block, although it's not really paired with an inefficiency, so it's not a great looking order block, to be honest with you. It's really not. That right there, like those two candles, that's a good looking order block. So look. See that? You get short right there as price comes below that order block one standard deviation so that was 232 just make a quick easy peasy one standard deviation lower see that order block right there put it right there see one standard deviation that's just bringing home the bacon right there guys that's just bringing home the bacon trades one standard deviation trades super reliable just that's that's making it just flipping that cheeseburger right there you know 10 points two hundred dollars daily wage a lot of people da daily's wage daily wages around the world just bang bang right there. So as price comes below the open of that candle, 232 three quarters, you know that's going to be an ICT bearish order block. 
project that one standard deviation lower. Price easily comes down, fills that. Take a look, take a look, guys. That's just right there. It's just 13, 13 and a half points. Just easy peasy, no problem. You know, that's bread and butter right there. 13 and a half points, just, just, uh, just like nothing basically. It's 20. It's 270 dollars right there. One contract, one contract right there. Just coming in the middle of the night. You know. One standard deviation trades, guys. You can make a living off one standard deviation trades. Easily. Easily, guys. You know what you're looking for. Okay. Take a look at this, guys. It's an order block right there. Show that to you. Look at that. Came down one standard deviation. Nice and easy peasy. Actually came down almost exactly to two. That order block right there. Those green candles. One standard deviation. Easily got filled on that. You would get short right there. There it is, guys. And I'm not saying only to use order block projections as your model but I'm saying that it's a you know it's another tool in the toolbox for your standard deviations so like for example right here see that look three standard deviations but you you could have had a trade right there from just 171 198 easy peasy even two standard deviations easy peasy okay it went up over three standard deviations from this order block So, one and two standard deviation trades, guys. Just bread and butter, really. Just cooking the steak. Shrimp on the bobby. Sometimes you'll get multiple standard deviations, but you don't need it. Don't need it to make a good living. Make a healthy, a very healthy living on one standard deviation. I know that sounds crazy, right? You want to hit 500-point trades? Well, how about hit 500 10-point trades? Just saying. I'm just saying, one standard deviation is really all you need to make a good living. So, all right. Um, at this point... I would not want to see this trade uh, come below that green candle there. So, there's that. Guys, I made 3,600 fake dollars tonight trading one standard deviation, really. And not trading a lot of contracts. Just repeatedly trading bread and butter setups. Stuff that you can pretty easily learn. Well, okay, not pretty easily learn. Through a great deal of work and strife. But you can learn them. They are learnable. I'm not doing anything magic, guys. I'm using mathematics. That should be a propulsion block right there, yeah? Bullish. So that's a bullish order block that trades into a prior bullish order block. That should really propel us quickly higher. Propulsion block. That should be. So guys, look. I'll show you an order block here. So look, see that order block right there? Look, there's one standard deviation. I bet you we get that. Like easy peasy. One standard deviation of that order block. 214.75. Oh, look, you could even do it from here. I'll do it from there. The full order block. Guys, even one half standard deviation. I'll show you that. Look, easy peasy. So you see the price from there? 195 to 206, guys, that's 10 points. That's $200. I kid you not. Half standard deviation. 
you can enter in right here on a buy stop as soon as it trades above these two black candles that's that becomes an order block half standard deviation higher I'm not saying that you should do that I'm just saying look and it's probably making it to one standard deviation so So look, right there, half standard deviation up. Not a lot of points there, but you can see that that bullish order block propelled us up half standard deviation. Real key, guys. Alright guys, that's pretty much the profit limit for me. I'm $11 short. I am not going to push it an extra um, $11. Um, Or will I? <whistles> I think I will, actually.
Okay. Should start rapidly repricing to that 233 and three quarters. Um, so I'm trying to squeeze out exactly 3600 minus. Okay, this is gonna be last trade though. So we're on the micro Nasdaq because I'm trying to squeeze out the last inch. Minus commissions, it'll be short of 3,600. Should be. And you can see that that order block there, two and three standard deviations of that order block. You can see the third standard deviation takes us above that liquidity, above New York midnight price which is where price should now be drawing. Uh, should get there pretty quickly. It's got a lot of work to do today. Uh, it has, so it's got to start repricing higher pretty aggressively, I think. Next hour should be a fat green candle, I think. If this were my trade station account, the commissions would be virtually nothing. Very low. Way lower than trade of eight. Like way lower. Not even close. I don't have enough money to trade trade station, but I will. Guys, we're going to get there. Lord willing. Patience, discipline, learning. Constant work, guys. We're going to get there. I'm going to trade my own trade station account. Professionally trade my own brokerage account. That's the goal, guys. It's going to take a lot of money, though. You know, the micro NASDAQ is a one-tenth product, so for as much work as I did tonight on the full-size NASDAQ, in my own real brokerage account, that'd only be $360. One-tenth the size, guys. So, it'll only be three and six dollars. It'd be good daily wage, but but not um, not what I can get with Top Step, right? So, but still, the equivalent of this on the micro Nasdaq would be good. It'd be three hundred sixty dollars, real dollars, not fake ones. I really only use three contracts, so I wouldn't need even that much money to do this in the overnight session. You know, only like $5,000, $6,000 to be comfortable to do this on the micros on my trade station account overnight. $360 in the overnight session, a couple hundred dollars in the day session. That would be a good living just on a six, dollars $7,000 account. So it can be done. I can get there can get to trading my own trade station account um, with my own money uh, and making making uh, my own income a couple hundred dollars a day on the micro NASDAQ uh, pretty soon guys pretty soon get there get funded with top step wire over that wire over any profits I make uh, to trade station start trading my own trade station account in addition to top step get some money coming in from YouTube the good Lord has given me the business plan, and we're going to keep working at it. This is what I'm called to do, so we're going to keep working at it. We're going to keep grinding. We're going to keep working. We're going to get funded with Top Step. We're going to make some money with Top Step. And then we're going to start trading our own trade station account, cash account on the micro NASDAQ. We're going to keep growing the YouTube channel. We're going to get some ad revenue coming in, So, and then affiliate marketing with Top Step, obviously. So step one of that whole big plan there, get funded, get funded. We can do that on Sunday, Lord willing. Well, 
April Monday. We just have to, you know, again, exercise patience, discipline, impulse control, hard work. I'll be doing a lot of work this weekend on reviewing ICT stuff, a lot of study. Okay, the next hour here, next candle should be large and green, I think. Guys, proper understanding of ICT models got me in right there. Isn't that crazy? Not on the micro NASDAQ. This is just green right now. Well, I shouldn't say that. I'm trying to optimize the setup here. You know, I want to actually get to that 3600 We're a few dollars short. So that's why we're long one micro NASDAQ. I mean NASDAQ machine, guys. The good Lord is going to make me a NASDAQ machine. NQ Slayer. It's going to take time and work and effort. NQ Professional. Professional NQer. Tech Stock Extraordinaire. If the good Lord wills it. And I think he does. Hey guys, it is Price is going to need to get above that 233 uh, quarters. That is the New York midnight open price in order to start that 24 hour banking cycle here. We need to start to see that acceleration pretty soon. Just needs to blow past this, get above that New York midnight open price. Because uh, to offer that fair and efficient price, it probably has to come and fill that regular trading hours gap. So it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to do that. And um, it's going to need to start repricing higher pretty quickly, you know, pretty quickly. So you see up here that regular trading hours gap. We're going to fill that in on Friday. If we are going to fill that in on Friday, then price needs to get a move on. Start moving higher, repricing higher pretty quickly. And basically, guys, all of the traders that thought that this was a trend or something, they're done. Like, accounts blown, you name it. So this thing's not coming back, guys, in my opinion. It's not coming back. It's just probably just going to be a straight rip higher today, in my opinion. A big, big pump. And all these people that were getting short in the London session really thought that that was the start of a trend or something, trend trading. Hmm. Very unfortunate situation for them, I think. Long one micro NASDAQ.
Okay, guys, risk management. Wouldn't want the price to trade below all times. I'm going to do this, guys. Um, wouldn't want it to trade below that order block. See that the buy program is is accelerating now. We're displacing far away from our low. Where it's going to climb up to that New York midnight open price. That's kind of the first target of price. And then from there, um, these equal highs are in the target. This high is in the target. This uh, premium SIBI is in the target. See all these equal highs? Those could be targeted on Friday as well, and then all the way up into these premium civvies as well. Okay, so lots of upside targets for price today on Friday. And obviously, regular trading hours gap. We talked about regular trading hours gap. Okay. So, non farm payroll Friday, you're probably looking at big movement higher. Guys, power of three or ICT's uh, accumulation manipulation distribution model. Got the accumulation there, guys, in that box. Got the manipulation down. What's the third thing that price will do? It's distribution, right? What time of the day did it manipulate? London session. What time would we expect on a very bullish day? What time would we expect our low to come into the market? London session, or specifically between 0300 and 0400, the London open hour, right? Right. And when did we get our low? 0350, right there. Right, right. At the time that we would expect the low for the for the day to be put in. So everything is looking good and lining up for a big bullish day on Friday, in my opinion. And at this point, the break-even stop is going to come in the marketplace. Time goes on, it's going to need to start accelerating, I think. Guys, ICT bullish breaker model. Low, high, lower low that pushes into liquidity. How about that? There's another model there, and it happened at the time we expected it to happen. Crazy. Crazy, guys. Crazy. Crazy. It's very crazy. Yeah, I mean, if you really wanted to, like, I don't know, trade effectively or whatever, was, was still getting some sleep, Get a long one contract there, put the stop below that low, and just wake up later. See, you know, see how things went. I don't. I'm showing patience here. I'm waiting that buy limit, that sell them to get filled. I'm not closing on the market now. Not on one micro. Again, we're training, guys. We're training the patience. Break even stops protecting me. I want to see my sell limit get filled. So I'm not I'm not closing out the market. No. I'm not doing it. On one micro, I'm not doing it. 
Absolutely not. We'll see that cell limit get filled. Call it a day. Call it a call it a trading day. Um, put out some YouTube videos tomorrow. Put some work in, guys. We're grinding. We're working. Okay, we uh, have maxed out the account for today. That account profit there is thirty five ninety seven fifty, guys. My name is Reese. I'm a uh, disciple of Michael Huddleston, ICT, and a disciple uh, of the Lord Christ. And, well, not a disciple, but a, well, disciple, I guess. Uh, just a believer, guys. Believer. Um, we're working on this, guys. ICT model. So I'm going to show you the executions here on the NASDAQ. Okay, we're going to review the trades real fast. So, guys, we were shorting this on the way down, right? We expected in my last video that we were going to get that shot lower. We got the shot lower. And after price, why were we expecting the shot lower? Because the higher time frame draw there was on this low here. So we were expecting the price was going to want to come down to that low. It did. And then as price came down to that low, I was like, damn, guys. So you can see that we covered our shorts there and there, right? There and there. And then I saw low and high. Okay, low and high. And I, what ICT teaches is that you can actually enter on that manipulation down into liquidity. And because it was happening during the 0300 to 0400, that London, you know, the London time frame, it was the right time for price to make a low for the whole 24 hour banking cycle. And so I got real excited. And you can see I was very confident that was, that was it. That was going to be the low for the whole fucking day, the whole 24 hour banking cycle, because it was at the right time of the day. All right, and it was the right model to do it on this bullish breaker at the right time of the day, and so you can see I just got along three contracts, literally one right there, one right there, one right there, guys. ICT is the only model, guys. This is computer science on a chart. I can't tell you this. I, I am just a man, okay. I could never do this on my own, guys. Look at that. My order, I. That low for probably the entire day, more likely than not, that's our 24 hour low day. I was the low, the actual low of mo most likely the 24 hour banking cycle on Friday. That low is 176 spot 50. And my buy limit was 177 spot, spot 75, guys. That's computer science. You can never tell me that's random. That's insane, guys. Come on. Whatever. I sell my beliefs, guys. I'm not telling you to buy, purchase security. Do what you want. I'm just telling you, I know where my heart is now, guys. Look at that entry. I'm not lying. That's my top step entry right there. Yeah, it's not real cash. I get that. What other guru is getting you to that entry? Right there, guys. What other guru, what other mentor is getting you to that? You tell, you fucking tell me. Is Vinny E. Mini getting you that? No, he's fucking not. He's a hick. Guys, come on, look at that. Is Vinny getting you there? Is Vinny getting you to that entry? Is he? Is he, guys? Is Vinny E. Mini getting you that? I told you accumulation, manipulation, distribution. I told you bullish breaker. I told you higher time frame draws and liquidity. When we were going short, what did I tell you? Guys, when we were going short during the agent session today, the draw and liquidity was right there. And when price came down to that draw on liquidity, I stopped trading and waited for more information. When price delivers a higher time frame draw on liquidity, you got to stop. That's kind of the thing. You got to wait for more information. So yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. Right when price was right here, it could have kept drawing down to the next lows, but I was already out. That's another key that y'all need to y'all need to get, guys. When price delivers a higher time frame, whether that's a 30 minute, one hour, four hour daily objective, you got to stop wait for more information you know you don't have enough information until some price action is put in before you can see what the you know what the next objective for price is you got to go from objective to objective okay so you see the price delivers on a higher time frame like it did here higher time frame sell side at that point you got to wait so I did wait all right I 
you know, I made some food. I waited for more price action after it delivered this. Bullish breaker, I saw it forming point A to point B. So I got, I knew that point C was probably coming in. It sure, it, and, 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 I, and it did. And that's how I bottom ticked this motherfucker. Guys, that's how I got in on the very bottom tick. A deep, deep understanding of the time of the day, the models that are being employed, the higher time frame draw on liquidity had already been delivered to the sell side. I mean, we'd been shorting all night long. The good Lord knows no amount of randomness, in my opinion, could ever get you to that entry. This is computer science, guys, in my opinion. In my layman, non-professional opinion, this is computer science. Okay? But with that being said, guys... Um, the good Lord willing, we will we will be funded on Monday. Um, we have a lot of work to do, guys. We got a lot of we have a lot of, of work to put in. I want to grow this YouTube channel. Want to get this YouTube channel monetized. Want to get that income stream coming in, um, and and reach our objectives, guys. So I'm pretty tired, uh, and I'm going to call it there. This has been the London session for the day of. Um, Friday, uh, July 7th, 2023. As I've already mentioned prior, it, I am of the opinion now that we are in a market maker buy model. And for Friday's trading, I'm expecting significantly higher all the way up to 351 spot 25. So that's kind of my current expectations for Friday's trading. All right. May the Lord bless you and... May the Lord be with you guys. We're going to get through this. Um, we will master this craft. We will get there. And that's all I have for you right now, guys. God bless. Bye-bye.